indeed a rare artist who can capture a woman's soul in a painting. My wife seems to have a hypnotic effect even on canvas. I'm uh, Kramer, of course. Uh, you're a busy man, Chan. So, I'll come right to the point. Somebody is trying to kill me. So? Yesterday, they almost succeeded. A chocolate was cold. I'm so sorry. I'll get some fresh. You'll join me, Chan. Now, let's see. Where were we? Oh, yes. Somebody strung a cable across my road near the cliff fall. Fortunately, I saw it in time. That's why I sent for you. Please sit down. I am honored, but why not the local police? Stupid, underpaid incompetence for the most part. I'm accustomed to the best. When I saw a news story that you were in town working on some cases, I called you. Have you reason to suspect anyone? No. Even the frightened fawn is aware of the hunter that seeks its life. Successful men are rarely popular. Was your wife with you when the attempt was made? No. And I have not discussed it with her. I have a profound respect for female intuition. All right. If you feel that way, let's join her on the beach. my employer's wife. Why don't you ask him? Because we're asking you. And after all, this is a criminal investigation. Now, this is a very interesting painting, Miss Parsons. Perhaps you are acquainted with the artist who painted it. Yes. Andre Patton. A friend of Mrs. Kramer? Yes. A close friend? You might call it that. Uh, if your employer approves of his wife's friendship with Mr. Patton. He's blind to what's going on. But you are not. She's a parasite. Nothing ever good enough for her. Not even Mr. Kramer. I hope she never comes back. And if you find her, I hope she's dead. <laughs> job of needling, Mr. Chan. Don't know where it leads us, though. Perhaps to the man who could transfer the mirror of a woman's soul to canvas. Maybe. I'll check on the artist later. Please excuse the intrusion, Mr. Patton. My name is Chan. Oh. Um, throw me that rag, will you, please? 
the uh, blue one near the goop. Thanks. Problem is always the eyes. Yes, quite right. Too much yellow, they lose life. Too little, they have no dimension. No. By the way, do you like your new job? Chop. You're working for old man Kramer. You did say you were Chan. You are very observant, Mr. Patton, but I am puzzled as to how you obtained that information. It's all over the village ever since Kramer went to the bank. You ever see such eyes? I uh, suppose you came over here to ask me about Marcia. Well, don't worry. She'll be okay. Your confidence is, is rather unusual, considering the situation. Now, she's too feline to get into any trouble she can't get herself out of. Like a cat, she was born with nine lives. It'll, uh, it'll cost Kramer money, but then he's got plenty of that. Obviously, you are well acquainted with the young lady. Well, you're not blind. I uh, introduced Marcia to Kramer. She used to be my model before she married him. But uh, you're wasting your time here with me. I find the answer to your problem a little closer to home. An enigmatic statement, Mr. Patton. Perhaps you can supply a little breeze to clear the fog from my mind. You ever thought of Kramer? Quite a character. A man like that could do a lot of strange things. His pride were involved. May I humbly offer a little advice, Mr. Patton? Such as? An artist's relationship with a married woman should be confined to paints and canvas. Anything more than that would be not only a breach of good taste, but could possibly lead to something very dangerous. Yeah. I thought of that. Any uh, other advice to offer? No. Any further information to offer? No. Good day, Mr. Patton. Good day, Mr. Chan. Get anywhere with the artist? A preliminary talk with the personality, Lieutenant, is like one of your plastic casts. Interesting in itself, but useless unless you find a foot that matches it. Well, I'll be talking with him and anyone else who might be able to fill us in. Chan! I found this in my car on the way back from the bank. It was wrapped in a package addressed to me in Marsha's own handwriting. The calling tag, huh? Tell me, do, do you have a machine uh, that reproduces it? Yes. something else. The background noise? That's right, Mr. Chan. They match perfectly. The ocean noise in the background is of the same level intensity and quality on both. So the chances are they were both made on the same machine, huh? I'd say so, Lieutenant. Okay. Thank you, George. Right. So it is an inside job, huh? The whole atmosphere of the Kramer house had that feeling, Lieutenant. Yeah. 
I knew we shouldn't have let Kramer make that money drop. At 11 o'clock, he's going to be out 50,000 bucks. I am thinking of a possibly greater loss. Oh? May I remind you that I was brought into the case originally because of attempts on Mr. Kramer's life. Let's go. Yes, but not the murder of the young lady. 
You seem pretty sure. Conclusion reached on first inspection of body. Now confirmed in preliminary autopsy report. Probable time of death, huh? You note that death occurred some eight to ten hours before our finding of Mrs. Kramer's body. I've noted. Why then? If Andre Patton committed the murder, why should he return to the scene of the crime after obtaining the money, instead of departing most rapidly for, for parts unknown? That, Mr. Chan, is a great big fat question. There's no need for you to see Mr. Kramer personally, Mr. Chan. He left full instructions with me as to the termination of your agreement. Mr. Chan. Strange, is it not, Miss Parsons, how wishes can sometimes turn into reality? What? The last time we discussed Mrs. Kramer, you expressed the emotional desire that she'd be dead if we found her. Here's Mr. Kramer's check for your services. I trust it's adequate. Aren't you even going to look at it? Under the present unfortunate circumstances, any payment would be more than adequate. I don't regret it your wish or the fact that Mrs. Kramer is dead? Both. Now that she's gone, he can start to live again, be the happy man he was before he met her. Ordinarily, when a husband loses a wife, the reverse is true. You didn't know him before she came into his life. Sweet, kind, and considerate. And she twisted him and warped him until he was like a stranger. Cruel, hateful, capable of... Of killing, Miss Parsons? What a horrible thing to say. Why did you say it? You were about to say it yourself, were you not? Our business is over, Mr. Chan. I have things to do. I would like to say goodbye to Mr. Kramer in person. He's on the beach. Thank you. Mr. Chan, they arrested that artist, Andre Patton. Why did you say that about Mr. Kramer? There is grave doubt about Mr. Patton being the one who murdered Mrs. Kramer. If he didn't kill her, who could the police possibly think? My personal belief is that they will find the answer to that question at the scene of the crime. shows that Mrs. Kramer died more than eight hours before we moved in. You'd have no reason to lie about that. None whatever. My apologies, then. I'm sorry I shot my mouth off. You did your best. At least you caught the killer. No, Mr. Kramer. What's that? Police have reasonable doubt about Mr. Andre Patton being guilty of the murder of your wife. There were only the two of them. There's no one else involved. If he didn't kill Marsha, who did? You are in the best position to answer that, Mr. Kramer. What's that mean? There are very few motives for murder, Mr. Kramer. One of the most powerful is hate. And the most powerful hate grows out of the loss of a most powerful love. You believe I know the person who could feel that way? No one was closer to the situation than yourself. Please have proof? That will take time, Mr. Kramer. As I told your secretary, Miss Parsons, they fear they will find all the evidence they need at the scene of the crime. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, 
you startled me, Mr. Kramer. The police must have been over everything. They wouldn't miss any evidence. Hadn't that occurred to you? Yes, of course, Mr. Kramer. That's why I'm here. I'm trying to tidy the place up now that they're gone. The summer season is going to start in a few weeks, and Hello. I thought that we should get them into shape so that you could rent it again. After all, it brings in a very tidy little income. Hello. It presents me with a problem. You will have to understand. You know how I feel about you, how I... Of course I do, Ella. You've been with me 20 years. You've been loyal and devoted. There was a very warm relationship between us. Yes, Mr. Kramer. A wonderful relationship. I'd do anything for you, you know that. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. Charlie Chan said, the most powerful hate can grow out of the most powerful love. He was right. But that's all over with now. The hate's all gone. So there's no reason. Mr. Kramer. I'm sorry, Ella. There's no reason to. She's gone now. We can forget about her and go back to being the way we were before she... There isn't anything else I can do now, Ella. You uh, just didn't... Uh, uh, you knew all the time. Let us say, Miss Kramer, I had a strong suspicion. Unfortunately, it was necessary to arrange something like this to bring it out into the open. You are ready now, Miss Parsons, to give your confession to the police? Yes, I'm ready, Mr. Chen. You do know why I had to do it, don't you? When I heard them planning... They were going to do. There wasn't anything else for me to do. You do understand now, don't you? It was a terrible thing she did to you. She, she took your love and turned it into hate. I knew you'd never be happy until you were rid of her. That's why I did it. To make you happy. You do understand, don't you? to make you happy. You see, just to make you happy. When a heart is full of tears, Miss Parsons, there's no room for understanding. What? It did not matter to him what his wife Marcia did or ever would do. He could not help himself. He did not hate her. You took the only thing in life he ever really loved. You killed her. 